Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. I'm talking with an old pal actually. I haven't seen him for a long time. Matt Edwards of Liberated Cloud. Matt, great to see you. It's been a long time. And a long time since you were at BT. But Absolutely. times have changed and times have moved on. And you're the director of this company, Liberated Cloud. What inspired it? What does it do? What inspired it? At Liberated Cloud was inspired on the back of that the whole digital services economy, the Internet of Things, means that we have to change the way we do business. Okay, so long gone are the days where um, you had a 20-year product life cycle and you had months to to um, develop a, a new product. Today's digital marketplace wants pay on demand. They want uh, uh, I want a movie and I want it now. You know, and I want to consume it right now. So um, the, digital, uh, the digital service provider of the future has to look at what they're, what they're specifically trying to, to achieve. And um, what uh, we've realized is that the marketplace or a, a cloud marketplace um, is exactly what, the, uh, what is required. Something that is simple, um, is very um, agnostic, so independent of underlying su uh, suppliers, um, and is, is, is very um, um, configurable as well. And I think that's what the, the marketplace is. I mean, if you look at um, the likes of an Amazon, Amazon uh, started off with their books, um, but then they moved. They, they took their, uh, opened their APIs and they, they opened it to you know, all products and services, and that's what they do now. And I think that the digital service provider of the future has to actually do exactly the same thing. They have to open up their um, uh, open up their API or open up and, and sell other products and services and other types of content. And I think in order for them to do that, they absolutely have to have this simple, um, configurable and agnostic uh, supply chain management uh, solution or platform. Okay, Matt, thank you for that. Second question then. What has Liberated Cloud done differently? We hear all the time and people say, this is our USP, we're completely different to everybody else. And when you analyze it, they're not. Yeah. So what have you done that is actually different? The digital marketplace, you need to be able to offer the services and products of, of, other, uh, of other suppliers. So we've realized that this supply chain management orchestration um, solution platform is absolutely fundamental to um, a service provider becoming a true digitized solution provider. So we have created a, a very simple, very configurable, um, and totally agnostic uh, platform which means that it's, as I said before, is completely independent of the under, underlying suppliers. What does that do for, for um, a buyer? It means that they have a one-stop shop to get all their computing needs. They don't have this fragmented marketplace where I have to get some cloud solution from there, some cloud solution from there. So it's a one-stop shop with a one bill. And for uh, the buyer, it's an additional or an attractive uh, channel to market. What? has so far to date been Liberated Cloud's biggest challenge? Without a doubt, uh, the biggest challenge for us has been the risk adverse nature of the current um, space in terms of service providers being literally risk adverse. So what we've done is we've said, well, let's look at the Amazon model, look at a niche. So we've created uh, an e-health marketplace. Um, but specifically looking at nutritional or natural products, so um, nutrition, lifestyle, and, and fitness. Okay, so we currently have si uh, over 16,000 natural health products um, that we're ready to deploy in our e-health cloud marketplace. These products will in uh, include things like vitamins, minerals, supplements, um, food, superfoods, but also things like uh, nutrition, nutritional consultancy. So what happens, you get the, con uh, the synergy across the suppliers uh, for the buyers as well so you might take um, a blood chemist or want blood chemistry analysis but can you interpret it we can also marry that into a bundle with a nutritional therapy um, consultancy which means that that person then interprets your blood chemistry analysis understands where there might be uh, a depletion in, in in your nutritional health and creates a, a health optimization program specifically to, to meet your needs. And then on top of that, you've got the analytics which enable you to uh, reduce your insurance premium, for example, because you're looking after yourself. 
When you say service providers are risk averse, do you mean in terms of technology, do you mean in terms of their organisational psychology, or just they, they're just stuck in a rut and we're going to do what we've always done? I think more their psychology. They're used to doing things in a certain way and it's a fundamental change of their, of their, of their, their psyche um, and, and culture. And I think that is the biggest challenge that they've got in terms of it's not just about the products that we sell, but we need to really look at the content and, and services that, that other people can offer as well. And until they do that, um, or they have to do that to survive in, in the marketplace. So do you see this change in taking place now? Because we do, I talk to a lot of people about this, and everybody says you know, with NFB, SDN and all the rest, and all of this virtualization stuff, the technology is one thing, actually getting the organisation and the people within the organisation who are in their silos and their seats and have been there all the time, they find it very hard to accept the change. And do you think it's holding things back? Definitely to change a culture of an organisation, if you've got 60,000, 100,000 plus employees, absolutely that's difficult. And I think the way that um, the, the successful players have gone is to buy other organisations that are nimble and quick and, and, and fundamentally uh, built for digital services. The interesting thing is if you look at something like um, BT and, and BT Sport, they've done it within their own organisation but it took them uh, to change their head guru um, and he's a media guy. So In, indeed. Horses for courses. Absolutely. Well best to look with him. Great to see you again. Don't see, leave it so long next time. All right. Thank you very much Martin. Take care.